Hello, everyone. I'm Becca, dietitian by trade, mom 24-7, wife from the start, and when there's a few extra hours in the day, you might find me hitting the trails or on horseback. And I'm Kara, a therapist to women, a mom to a boy, an entrepreneur, mountain junkie, and a postpartum runner. And this is Fit for a Queen, a podcast that's devoted to the female athlete wanting to balance the teeter-totter of all the things we desire out of life as women. Performance, health, intellect, and taking time for self, even if we only get one minute out of the day. We're so excited to be bringing you the queens in the athletic world who have done just that. Okay, ladies, take a seat at your thrones, grab your crowns, and welcome to Fit for a Queen. Welcome back, Queens. We, we actually, this is going to be our first king on the show. Oh, so congratulations, yeah, John. You're our first, <laughs> you're our first male, male interviewee. Yay. <laughs> welcome, welcome. <laughs> so John O'Sullivan is an internationally known TED speaker and the founder of Changing the Game Project, which he started in 2012 in order to better educate parents, coaches, and youth sports organizations and put some play back in playing sports. John is a former collegiate and professional soccer player and coached for 20 years on the youth, high school, and college level. He's been an advisor and presenter for numerous sporting organizations across the globe, including U.S. soccer, football, lacrosse, swimming, and hockey. He sits on the National Advisory Board for the Positive Coaching Alliance and the National Association for Physical Literacy. John is also the author of two number one bestselling books, and his blog gets nearly 5 million visits a year. His goal today is to start a discussion about changing the environment in youth sports so we can keep more kids active, healthy, and involved in physical activity. Mm -hmm. So welcome. Thanks for having me on, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, we love how you're trying to keep the play in youth sports. Can you talk about how and why you feel this culture is shifting in youth sports? You know, parents, I, we only hear the bad story about the crazy parents in sports, but um, what is it about um, youth sports that's kind of going on right now? Well, I think, you know, w one of the big things is just we've pushed the adult version of the game, the biggest field, the biggest rules, to the most complicated rules to younger and younger ages. Mm -hmm. And we, we feel as parents sometimes that, um, you know, oh, my kid's going to miss out if we don't do this mm -hmm. and everyone else is doing this. So we have to keep up with the Joneses. And it's created this downward spiral in, in sports where we've lost in town leagues. We've lost the ability of kids to sample sports. And in many places, you know, they're forced to choose one at, seven eight years old and none of the science says that this is a good thing from a physical standpoint from a social standpoint from a psychological standpoint and so part of the reason that i started change the game project was can we bring back sort of what's you know let's make youth sports serve the needs of the youth and not the needs of <laughs> the adults yeah right mm -hmm. Love it. Mm -hmm. So on that note, I've kind of stepped into a couple different roles out of being an athlete myself <laughs> to now being a parent of a young daughter and also coaching her. So what is some advice that you would give for, let's start with the parent raising a competent, successful athlete? Because, you know, I personally struggle to, I want her to develop a work ethic, but I don't want it to come off as pushing her. And I want her to, you know, choose to be in sports because she wants to play and have fun. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to speak sometimes in generalizations, right? Because every all generalizations end at the individual level. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I think, first of all, a as parents, our, our first goal should be to help our kids learn to move, right? And we call this physical literacy. Um, so the ability to run, jump, catch, throw, track balls in the air, things like that. These are learned skills. Now, some kids seemingly get it and some don't. But if you think about it this way, if if we did all our sports in a pool, the first thing we teach kids to do is swim. Mm -hmm. Well, we do most of our sports on the ground, yet we don't teach them anymore. Here's how to jump correctly. Here's how to run correctly. Right. Here's how to catch. Here's how to throw. And so uh, an early experience where 
kids learn fundamental movement skills is super, super important, right? So tumbling and gymnastics and parkour type activities and martial arts are really, really important early on. And then, you know, the, the ability of kids to sample sports so that they start picking ones that they love versus, um, us pigeonholing them into one because someone tells us, Oh, your kid could be a great soccer player if Mm -hmm. she only plays soccer. And, and so, um, and then you'll find, I mean, I have two kids and they couldn't be more different in terms of their path. My daughter who's 12 now, um, the more people around, the more social, the group, the better it is. So any team sport environment, (laughs) she loves it. And my son, it was much more introverted and tried some team sports early on and was a good athlete, but just didn't really like them. And then liked riding his mountain bike and snowboarding and playing golf. And then all of a sudden now at age 11 has decided that he really enjoys soccer again. And so he's playing soccer again, but he took three years away from it. And everyone's like, how can you let your son take three years off? I'm like, because if I force him to play, (laughs) he's going to quit. Mm-hmm. It's got to be his decision to get out there and say, yeah, I want to make this commitment to do this. Mm-hmm. What is the statistic? I think I even heard that on the TED Talk you did where when they start from such a young age competitive, more than likely they're burned out by age. Was it 13? Yeah, I mean, we lose a lot of children. I mean, they say 70, 75 percent by the age of 13 mm-hmm. to wow. organize sports high school yet or right into high school. That- that's so many kids, 77 <clears throat> percent. Wow. It's so many kids. And, and there's a variety of reasons. Let's face it. You know, yeah. at that age, kids have more difficult academics. They, you know, they start, you know, some kids, the girls discover boys. Mm-hmm. Um, people start getting jobs that they have other interests and they consolidate those interests. But, you know, there are a lot of kids who are just beat up, injured, and burnt out by by that age, which is really, really sad Mm -hmm. because what they know from studies of elite level athletes is that's actually the age where the people who make it to the very top actually start putting in more hours. um, And we've forced these high level Mm -hmm. commitments down so young that now kids are done by these most crucial years, which Mm -hmm. is really sad. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it is sad. What about for the coach? So a lot of times these youth um, coaches are parents like myself. Now, luckily, having been a former collegiate athlete, I have a little bit of knowledge. But what could be some ways to guide the coaches? Well, I think first and foremost, we, regardless of the organization in the United States, we have to do a much better job of training our coaches. Mm-hmm. I mean, can you guys think of any <clears throat> other place – where we allow an adult to be in charge of kids for so many hours and we don't require them to have any knowledge or training. (laughs) No, no, (laughs) there's nothing. That's very true. Right. There's nothing. And yet this is what we do with sports. And, and, and it can be such an emotional and public experience. And these untrained, even though they might be well attention intentioned adults, can do the wrong thing. So, so first and foremost, as a coach, you have to realize that um, the first thing you have to do is connect with your, with your kids, right? That, that they will only care what you know once they know that you care. And, and so that is one of the most important qualities of a coach. Number two, you have to make it enjoyable. All right. doesn't mean that you can't work hard. doesn't mean that kids can't compete hard. And when they ask kids, they actually say, you know, competing hard, coaches who are organized, coaches who push me, that makes it fun, right? Mm-hmm. Fun isn't fooling around. Fun is getting better and learning new things. Um, and so, you know, coaches, you got to make it enjoyable and, and you have to connect with your kids first and foremost. Um, and then you have to really go out and if your organization doesn't work, require it get yourself some training there's Mm -hmm. tons of free resources out there but get yourself some training and and just because the statistics show that kids who play for a coach who is trained are far more likely to come back the next year than kids who don't Mm -hmm. i you know i'm just thinking about the coaches 
That position is more stressful, I would think, than ever right now. <laughs> They're dealing with so many more things that with the parents and the athletes and just issues, social media. <laughs> right. it's, it's, it's really hard, you know, and, and a coach who maybe is paid or makes a living or is a, certainly college or maybe high school level, like they they kind of signed up for that. Mm -hmm. They know it getting in. But, you know, when you're coaching seven or eight year olds and you've got some <laughs> lunatic parent on the sideline thinking that you're ruining their kid's career and you've just volunteered Crazy. your time. Mm -hmm. It's like, come on, you know, right. Becca's just had your a few of said. those experiences. <laughs> it's crazy to hear some of the stories she has to. Oh, yeah. Coaching her appalling. daughter's ball and, team. And, <laughs> and realistically, you know, I don't know how old your kids are. But when kids are six or seven, as soon as the game ends and that parent is fuming about how they lost, all the kid wants to know is, what's the snack? Right. You know? Right. <laughs> exactly. And where's that juice box? Can I stay the night? Can we go get ice yeah. cream? They completely exactly. forgot about the game, which is how it should be, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So what are some things you can tell your young athlete that helps mold, you know, mold them um, and stay in this healthy mindset? I think first and foremost, you know, you, you you can say to kids, well, when they're really young, right? So let's say, you know, eight, nine, ten years or younger. Um, I think every every boy or girl can have three goals for that season: um, have fun, work hard, fulfill your commitment. Right. Ooh, so we signed like you up for this nine week soccer season. Sorry, you're not liking it as much as you thought you would, but you made this commitment. Mm -hmm. And so we fulfill our commitment. Now, we don't have to ever sign up for soccer again, but we are going to fulfill the commitment we made to this team and, and this group. Right. And then as they get older, they can start sort of setting their own goals and their and their own expectations um of what i want to do and what i always advise them is you know make it something measurable make it something tangible put it up on the wall so if you're playing uh basketball and you say i want to get better at basketball that's not really a goal right how do you how do you measure that mm -hmm. but if you say okay i want to make um this team in middle school how am i going to do that well all right put up a calendar and every day I'm going to go out in my driveway and and shoot for 30 minutes. And every day I do that, I'm going to put an X on the calendar. And then I can look back when middle school tryouts come up. And if I didn't make the team, well, let's see how many X's are on that calendar. Because mm -hmm. realistically, if there's not a lot of X's, you know, I got I have to own that. Mm -hmm. I have to own that result. And so I think that's always a good thing for kids is, you know, every kid says, I want to do this. Well, great. What are you going to do to get there? Mm -hmm. well, right. Karen, I can appreciate that because we work a lot with athletes that have eating disorders or care, especially with mental health. And mm -hmm. many times they, they're just like that. I want to get better. And they're grasping at straws for things like, well, maybe if I just get lighter or maybe if I take the supplement i think that's that's a great way for them to work on something tangible mm -hmm. well it's got to be about i mean because that's all process driven right you can't get strong by taking a supplement you got to show up in the weight room and and on the track and do the work mm -hmm. right and so so it's being outcome it's being outcome aware right i want to make the team i want to get stronger i want to get faster whatever but it's got to be process driven and then purpose driven you got to know your why mm -hmm. if you have a really strong why and you have a good process laid out you're you're far more likely to achieve your outcomes and they can be out there but day to day you, you know you gotta get back to the grind yeah yeah well yeah having the goal of just making the team can be kind of overwhelming right so breaking it down into um manageable goals over time to get there that makes a lot of sense mm-hmm um, what resources are available for others to learn more about um, Changing the Game? Can you talk a little bit more about Changing the Game Project? Sure. So you know, this all started in 2012. I put pen to paper on a book after you know being an athlete myself and, and then a coach. And I was a high school coach and a college coach and a youth coach for many years. Um, and so I put pen to paper to a book, realized very quickly that 
Um, it's actually not that hard to write a book. It's very hard to actually get people to know that you wrote a book. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so um, I started a blog around it and, and the blog is really what took off first. And that's mm-hmm. just at changing the game project.com. And since then we've added a podcast called the way of champions and a coaching conference and things okay. like that, that mm-hmm. basically, um, where we're doing a, a, a ton of work on that. And we have a team of speakers. So we go all over the world working with, coaches and 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 parents and boards of directors and of youth sports organizations we speak to a lot of schools to the sometimes just the student athletes and sometimes to you know 2000 kids from the school about uh habits and process and dealing with adversity and all these things that are really important um in those years and so yeah we 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 basically give everything away right you want to listen to a podcast you want to you know, read a blog post. It's all there for you mm-hmm. um, at changingthegameproject.com. And then we have a Twitter page and we have a Facebook page and, and things like that where, where people follow us there as well. But the hub, the hub is changingthegameproject.com. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Well, we'll put that on the show notes too. Yeah. Check Thank it out. You. Um, at the end of every interview, we ask how you live out the fit philosophy, which is balancing performance, health, intellect, and taking time for self. So how do you find the balance in all of your busy work out there? For myself personally yeah. or for my kids? Oh, for myself Well, you can personally. please talk about the kids too. Because <laughs> <Well, laughs> that's well, really well, hard. I'll, I'll, uh, yeah, well, I'll start with kids yeah. saying that my wife and I, who are both Division One college athletes, um, are, are very big. And obviously with what I do is that we actually try to limit the kids' activities. So one sport a season mm-hmm. type thing, um, which is really hard to do. Mm-hmm. But making sure they get time off, making sure they have time for friends. I just had a conversation with my son in the car yesterday, and he said, you know, you know, this kid on my team, you know, he plays baseball and he does basketball and it's just cool how some kids could do that. And I said to my son, I was like, TJ, well, you could do that too, but you choose not to. And he's like, yeah, you're right. I like just hanging out at home. <laughs> right. And and like our kids don't, we don't own video games. Hanging out at home means going out and playing with the neighbors and maybe playing two on two tackle football in the yard. Mm-hmm. But like, that's what you know, that's what he likes to do. He's like, yeah, you're right. Um, so that balance and, you know, they both play an instrument and, and things like that. And we, we were just camping this weekend and we fish and we ride our bikes and we hike and things like that. So that's the family balance. And then, you know, for me personally, um, having a business like, like this work is really never done. Mm -hmm. So trying to set aside the time, every day for myself. Um, and I, so I live in a place called Bend, Oregon, which mm-hmm. is a huge outdoorsy place. And so, um, in the winters, um, I ski a lot. Um, right now I, I bike and, uh, I love to fly fishing is kind of my shut everything off and mm-hmm. hit the reset button, <laughs> yeah. uh, getting older. So I do a little yoga and, and things like that to try to, uh, keep moving, try to, you know, meditate, especially when I'm on the road speaking, I try to do a lot of meditation and stuff just to kind of get myself in, in the right place. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough in, in this day and age with a cell phone in our pocket, therefore email and social media in our pocket, it can be very, very hard to disconnect. Okay. And so mm-hmm. I try to we try to go camping in places with no cell phone signal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is even getting harder to find. You yeah. That's that even excuse, getting harder right? to find. We <laughs> succeeded this weekend, which is fun when friends are coming to visit you and they can't find your campground, but... <laughs> <laughs> they can't get a hold of you. Right? <laughs> they can't get a hold of you. Uh-huh. Uh, but uh, And so then three days later when they do find you and then they get back home <laughs> and your text pops in that says, are you coming? <laughs> mm-hmm. Oops. <laughs> But that's a very good point. We've talked to a lot of like business owners, Becca and I are as well of like, you're never, you can never get away from it, the emails and the social right. media. So um, that is such an important aspect of like when you turn that off. So sometimes you have mm-hmm. to escape to, to no Wi-Fi signals. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And it's been refreshing because we've had several high caliber athletes themselves like yourself 
that are now stepping into parenthood and mm-hmm. they're echoing, no, we're not letting our kids start multiple activities yeah. and we're not letting them do competitive at age five. <laughs> um, right. And so I think people need to hear that. That's not going to hinder their athletic performance. It's only going to help them. Mm-hmm. It, it is. And I, I mean, I coach, uh, you know, I coach travel soccer now with my daughter's team who are 12 and 13 years old. And, you know, there's pl- plenty of those girls trying to who who play multiple sports, and you know, I try to and and they play piano and they do other stuff, and I don't punish them for missing practice. I'm like, you know, if someone here they're they're getting better while you're doing something else, but that's fine. Mm-hmm. You know, who I'm not going to tell you at 12 years old that you have to pick this over everything right. else. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, as kids get into high school. And we sit down and say, well, what are your what are your goals for this? And if a kid says, I want to be you know, I want to go play soccer at Stanford. Well, you know what? You, you can't at that point, you're not going to be able to play soccer three months a year and, mm-hmm. and get that done. Right. So you then might have to make decisions, but you make those decisions and own those decisions and and things like that. And so I think um, th- there's a time and a place where where certain kids have to make decisions and and then some kids are such such extraordinary athletes that they can balance three sports all the way through high school and still play at a very high level in college. Um, But again, each individual has their own unique needs and and abilities. And as a coach and as a parent, you have to recognize that. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, you have gave us a lot of good tips today. Thank you. Um, We're very thankful for your time today. And we'll be sure to put all those resources on the, the show notes. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for for doing this this great show and uh, for for allowing me to be the first king. That's yes. quite an honor. I don't know that I've ever been uh, knighted like that. Yeah, before, you're so. now crowned King Solomon. <laughs> Let your wife know <laughs> you are now a king. Oh yeah, I will like, let my oh, wife great. know. That's exactly it. I'm like, honey. By the way. So you know, today. I'm not cooking dinner. Today. <laughs> well, thanks so much, John. Have a great day out there. Bye, guys. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Bye, Queen. Thank you to our sponsor today, Sentimano Counseling. Sentimano Counseling is the premier perinatal mental health practice in Kansas City, treating mood disorders during pregnancy and postpartum, perinatal loss, infertility, eating, and exercise disorders. Go to Sentimano.com for further information about the practice and services. For additional information on today's topic and guests, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at fit for queen and Hashtag fit for a queen. And don't forget to rate us on iTunes. We can't wait for you to join us next time on Fit for a Queen. Bye, queens.